Next I'll be covering how to configure your router, both in a handheld plunge router and with a router table. I'll go over some details with a handheld plunge router. First, you have two handles. You have an on-off switch. This right here is, is made to where when you are adjusting the depth, you can unlock it, slide it up and down, and it threads up and down this rod here. So you can start at a certain adjustment and then plunge from that depth. This knob right here locks it at a certain depth, as does this one on the back side of the router. Some of the basic care of a router would be to keep, keep, make sure you're keeping the rails clean that the plunging action slides up and down on. Also, occasionally, you would have to remove this black cover and replace the brushes that, attack, that make contact with the armature on the router motor. Other things are just making sure the cord stays in good condition and just basically that you don't drop it because a router is a pretty precise tool because this, this armature is rotating and comes out the bottom of the motor and if it's not rotating properly, you won't get a true cut on your pieces of wood. With the table router, it requires slightly different configurations. Since you're dealing with basically a plunge router mounted upside down in a table, you need to make sure that everything is perpendicular. This tabletop surface needs to be perpendicular to the shaft that's running through the router. One way of doing this is making sure that the actual lowering and raising system is flush with the top. You need to do this by making sure that when mounting the, the uh, router into the table that there's nothing underneath the, on the inside of the rabbit throwing off its levelness. Other things, especially with a router, is they create a lot of dust because when they cut they create like fine dust not so much chips like other tools so you need to make sure that you're cleaning off your tools one way to do this probably the cleanest way is with compressed air other ways are just on occasion cleaning it off you know with just a damp cloth or some windex or something like that uh, another thing to make sure that your tool is running properly is using the right speeds when using the right speeds, it ensures that the motor isn't under any, any uh, stress that it shouldn't be under. For example, running a large bit at a high speed puts too much stress on the motor. It torques it in the wrong way. When a router is mounted into a lowering and raising piece like this Jessam here, you need to make sure that it's sliding evenly on both sides. If not, the router can, mount, can like actually kind of like rack on the, uh, the rails and cause it to be cutting unevenly or either lock or you'll end up like when you're trying to adjust it you'll strip out the nut that uh, that actually moves it also there's a belt on the inside if this belt becomes too loose or stretched out it won't work properly it can end up slipping um, other things also just like the plunge router you need to make sure the cord's staying in good condition that the inside of the router is staying fairly dust free and that the brushes on the inside of the motor that make contact with the armature are also in good condition.